Yeah. Mark Rathless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, for allowing me to speak following uh, my select committee and in advance of the planning minister giving a reply. Earlier this month, uh, Natural England uh, declared MOD land at Lodge Hill in my constituency to be a site of special scientific interest. Now, this site has been designated very clearly in numerous plans over 18 years. Uh, for 5,000 homes and for um, employment land for 5,000 uh, further people. £35.5 million pounds has been spent to get it to the point of granting planning consent. And the Council is concerned, to put it at its mildest, to be thwarted at the last hurdle after all this time and money by Natural England, who do not consider the economic impacts. The response of the council leader, uh, Rodney Chambers, was as follows. This is a very disappointing news to receive from unelected quangocrats at Natural England. As a local authority, we're eager for this scheme, which is on government-owned land to progress and deliver the houses and jobs we badly need. He continues, the government is constantly telling us that we should be going for growth, kick-starting the economy and fighting the recession. And yet here we are with a shovel-ready project that would deliver 5,000 much-needed homes being delayed by a government agency. The reason for that, we're told by Natural England, is um, they have discovered, or uh, a, a, a study of some description has discovered, um, 84 nightingales which may use that site. And the comparison is between those 84 nightingales and the homes for 12,000 people and the jobs for a further... 5,000 people. Now, we are told by the Prime Minister that we are in a, a global race, but it is not clear that that message has yet uh, filtered through to bodies such as Natural England. Now, there have been other instances locally. That, uh, at Grain, there is a proposal for employment generation, 6,000 jobs on a, a site owned by a, a national grid company, and that has been delayed now for some three years because the possible... Uh, uh, a habitat of a, of, a, of a bug in that area. Uh, similarly, near Medway, uh, in the Swanscombe area, there's a proposal that would deliver 27,000 jobs, and that has been delayed because of concerns about a particular breed of spider. There's also, at, uh, at Dungeness, concerns about vegetated shing shing shingle, which has to be considered for, for power development there. So it, it is not su su surprising that sort of lead leaders, council leaders from the area say we need to end the absurd situation of a non-elected government agency dictating to national and local government how to run things. And I say to, to the minister that Medway is, a, is a an example of a council that is pro-development, that wants to support the minister, that wants to show it is open for business. And I would ask if the, the minister will assure me that our local council will be able to decide where it's best for development to go, not ministers or their inspectors, and still less these quangos. We've heard of the bonfire of the quangos. As far as natural England is concerned, it appears to have fizzled. And we have, uh, supposedly, an executive board of that body, I understand, has taken this decision and it's going to be reviewed and there's some, as ever, sort of consultation process, but I'm not clear whether that is a mere formality or whether it's a genuine process. But we are told that in July this decision will be uh, reviewed by the full board of Natural England. And if actually that body has any reality, if it's more than a rubber, rubber stamping exercise, then I would appreciate the Minister's views as to whether that will be a genuine exercise and whether that board will actually consider the wider representations or indeed whether it's able to consider the policy of this government. And if it's not able to consider this policy, then I think the question can only arise how ultimately do democratic members, democratic ministers have their way on what they say is a global race for this country when they have a council such as Medway that wants to develop in this area, that has planned for many years, has spent many, many million pounds, whether they will be able to make that 
I think, finally, though no doubt somebody will holler, Mr Deputy Speaker, if I've missed them out, uh, to my honourable friend for Rochester and Strood. And I can well understand the dismay of Medway Council that is seeking to do what all of us across this House understand is necessary, and that is make provision to build more houses. I can well understand their dismay that a major scheme like this should be put at risk uh, by uh, a, a, a declaration that the site is to be viewed as a site of si a special scientific interest. Um, I cannot again, of course, comment on the specific merits um, of that decision or of the particular scheme. I can, however, reassure him of two things. Firstly, that the, mm, a, a notification uh, as an SSSI does not necessarily mean that the site cannot be developed. All it does mean is that the developer has to make uh, very uh, advanced efforts both to mitigate and if they cannot entirely mitigate then compensate for any uh, impact on the site. Um, I can also reassure him that only last week I met with the chairman of Natural England um, and I will be very happy to explore with him what is the status of that notification how it came about um, and whether it can be managed in such a way to ensure that houses that are needed for the people of his constituency are built. Um, I hope that that has answered all of my honourable friends and honourable gentlemen and ladies' uh, questions, Mr Deputy Speaker.